Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosal here. Put together a slideshow today regarding social networks for video sharing other than YouTube. Now, the purpose of this uh, slideshow that I put together here was actually to um, encourage people to think beyond YouTube for places to share their video, despite the irony that I'm going to be distributing this video itself primarily on YouTube. Now, a question I've got asked over the last few years from various clients has been, general confusion regarding what are the pros and cons of different networks for video sharing. Should we upload our corporate video to LinkedIn or should we post it on YouTube and then link to that from our, you know, share that link on our YouTube company page. And it's a little bit complicated, not too complicated, but there are slightly different requirements for different social platforms when it comes to video hosting and distribution, because don't forget those are two separate things. The social networks that offer video as a feature really do two things for you. Firstly, they host your video file. And the second thing they do is they provide some means for the end user to actually watch the video, some playback interface. So let's get cracking and taking a look at um, these different networks. Now, just a quick word regarding who this video, who I put together this uh, slideshow for. If you're interested in using video for social media or you're interested in syndicating video from YouTube, so you're already using YouTube to publish stuff like webinars or corporate video um, or slideshows like this and you think maybe we could expand our reach if we thought beyond YouTube and looked at maybe pushing it out through other platforms, perhaps through doing you know outtakes, clips or shorts. That can be a very effective strategy if you break up a big one hour webinar into 10 short videos that are short enough to uh, share over Twitter or perhaps over LinkedIn. And we'll come to all this. Or you want to know when to use which social platform or when to use none at all. And that's something that very few people these days consider because everyone's so used to YouTube being there and being this amazing sort of um huge video hosting platform that can just fit every videos there every video in the universe there's more than 800 million videos on youtube but before you immediately decide youtube is a place that i want to publish my video it's worth pausing for a second to think what about if we just publish the video on our own website that is still an option and it's viable a lot of the time here is a partial list of some of the social media platforms that have video as a feature. Now, as I pointed out here, this is a partial list. There are a ton of social networks. It's actually quite interesting. If you look up a list, a Wikipedia list, you'll see that there are some social networks that are completely different in different geographies, some that are very small and very niche. So this is by no means an, an authoritative listing of the world's social networks. These are just in the English speaking world, the kind of biggest ones and the ones that in my time and experience working in marketing communications, I've done the most work with. So those are YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. That's the only one that doesn't have uh, the name of the platform in its logo, at least in the logo I chose for this uh, slideshow, interestingly enough. We also have TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and not to forget Reddit. So there's two ways I'm going to suggest might be interesting or useful for folks to make sense of this kind of panoply of different networks. The first methodology is to break down networks by whether they're video platforms or they're just offering video as a feature. Now, if the majority of content you're gonna be creating is gonna be video content, um, and you're looking to distribute that through social media, it's probably best to actually go for a network that's built for video because that's what you're going to be pushing out there. Now you can share videos over Twitter, you can share videos over Reddit, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, but in for none of these networks is video sharing the main use case, right? Most people on Twitter are tweeting text, some people are tweeting photos, and probably I don't have the statistics, but relatively few users are sharing video versus YouTube where it's a video platform. And the same as TikTok, it's a video platform, but uh, different demographics, very, uh, very close network as social media platforms go, quite optimized for mobile and uh, popular among a younger demographic. Whereas YouTube, I would say is a bit more open. Um, it's been more open and across the, across, cuts across the age demographics. The second schema I recommend for breaking down your social networks is if you post your video, who's going to be able to see it? Do you need to have an account on that social media platform to watch the video? Now, this is one that very few people ever think about, and that's a great pity because this is very important. 
if you're an, the reason I say that's important is it depends who you're anticipating will watch your video. Let's say you want your video to be very easy to reach. Some of your target demographic might not be so wonderful with technology. I'm thinking of my mother here, but perhaps your mother isn't so uh, great with tech or your grandfather or whatever. Now, if I was distributing my video content over TikTok or LinkedIn, they might have no idea how to set up an account on one of these networks in order to be able to watch these videos. YouTube is really easy. You do need a YouTube, you do need a Google account to um, uh, to upload YouTube, to be a user really, to comment on videos, but to watch a YouTube video, you don't need for the vast majority of instances an account. So you can just email your grandfather a link to a YouTube video and he can watch it. So that, in my opinion, is a very important reason that people completely overlook. And it's one why, in most cases, I would recommend actually starting with YouTube and then just breaking out to these more niche communities like LinkedIn with its very business focus, Reddit popular among techies and, a, and it's kind of 20 to 30 yuppie demographic maybe. Facebook these days is getting a bit long in the tooth. Twitter very good for current events, etc. They all have their own kind of flavors and personality. And if you can think of what's going to be most appropriate. But I would start with YouTube or your or ideally a website because it's going to be accessible to most people. Now this is a point I made at the start of the video. Don't forget that you can host and distribute your video online without needing a third party. Again, because YouTube, we're so used to YouTube and YouTube is wonderful. I love YouTube. I spend literally a couple of hours per day watching YouTube videos, but people forget that it's still very much possible to publish video without the help of any third party social platform. And that comes with advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is there is a common aphorism. I'm sure you've heard it before. Don't build your castle on some, somebody else's land. So. You know, when you're creating content on top of YouTube, you you are subject to YouTube's terms of service. If they don't like your video or someone complains about it, it, you know, it's probably an outside chance if you're playing by the rules, but there's always that kind of risk that it is a third party service and they could pull the plug on your channel. And this is my second point here. If you publish on your website, it really does free you up from having to worry about the change in content policies of third-party social media platforms over which you have no control. I commonly recommend that no one hitches their entire marketing strategy, even social media strategy, on third-party networks. It's just too risky. So if you have, if you're doing marketing, you're watching this video for an enterprise or you know some organization where you have a good amount of budget to play around with, it might be feasible for you to actually publish your video content on your own website. You could even gate it with a mail, you know, with a lead capture form or stuff like that. And it's really not complicated technically to do this, right? If you own a domain name, you own some hosting and you install the WordPress content management system, you have everything you need to host and serve video. Really, it's that, I mean, and there's, there's, there are video playback apps, there's even YouTube skins that you can install to have a kind of copycat version of YouTube, but just doing WordPress is, is the best option for most people, or Joomla, or Drupal, or Ghost, or, you know, choose the CMS that you like. Now, the disadvantage here is that video is heavy, right? To state the obvious, a Word document's a pretty light amount of data, a, a, a photo is heavier, a, an audio file is probably heavier again, and video can get very heavy <coughs> if you're, you know, uh, distributing 4K video or even just a long 1080p file, something like conference proceedings or uh, webinars or even this video file is probably going to come out to, how long have I recorded for at this point, nine minutes, it's probably, it probably might get half a gigabyte to a gigabyte. So um, unless you have generous hosting, it can eat up data very, very quickly. And it can also make it a bit of a pain if you want to move between platforms because you're gonna have to offload all your video content, which could amount to terabytes from server A and migrate it to server B. So those are the disadvantages. What I'm gonna cover in the second half of this, uh, of this video or this webinar is going to be the idiosyncrasies of the various video platforms because they're all slightly different. Now, these are some of the things that are going to be different depending on the platform. Firstly, the aspect ratio requirements. This video I'm publishing is going to be in 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is the classic 16 to nine aspect ratio. That's the ratio of width to height. Now, these days we're seeing a big rise in vertical video and two common aspect ratios that YouTube Shorts is, is pushing is nine to 16, which is vertical, which is horizontal video flipped on its head. 
and one to one, which is obviously square video. Second thing we're going to see differences in is going to be the runtime requirement. Some networks are going to enforce the minimum or maximum runtime is going to be a bit different. The expected format, whether the network says you're going to have to upload your video as an MKV or an MP4 or an MOV. Content policies regarding what's allowed or not allowed on that particular platform, those are going to change a little bit. And publishing and content management functionality. So for instance, YouTube, which we're going to be talking about now, has a pretty nice mature a platform called YouTube Studio that makes it quite easy to edit and manage your content library. There's features for selecting multiple videos and applying changes at once, which makes bulk editing or batch editing quite easy. I'm calling YouTube the big guy because when it comes to video, it's still the biggest name in town. Now, one network I didn't include in this roundup was Vimeo. And there's other kind of more niche video hosting platforms, but they're really less popular than YouTube. And I've, I've gone searching for YouTube alternatives just to see what, they, what ones are out there. And I haven't found anything really all that great, to be honest with you. Vimeo, some corporate users like it for the fact that it's quite easy. It's, it's less of a social network, so there's less of um, distractions regarding sort of a common functionality that's supposed to be there in recommended videos. And some people find it a bit cleaner to share videos that way but youtube is the monolith more than 800 million videos staggering number of videos on youtube now the time limit is pr pretty much unlimited i mean it's not unlimited it's up to 12 hours or 256 gigs and in order to upload videos more than 15 minutes you do need to verify your uh, phone number with youtube but you know who's going to be uploading videos more than 12 hours and even if you are uploading something like 24 hours watching the sky watching asteroids you could just split that into two videos so i would say for almost everyone especially everyone watching this uh, webinar which i'm mostly sort of thinking about the type of clients i work with corporate users no one's going to be uploading 12 hours worth of video even for a conference it would be much better to upload one video for each speech because no one's going to be interested in it's unlikely people will want to watch the whole conference now you can add timestamps within youtube videos and make it easy to jump between chapters um to kind of argue against my point there about it would be better to do separate videos for a conference but i still think it's you know it's uh you can use both um but 12 hours is, is not really a problem for most people youtube has also recently spun off a short video functionality they call it youtube shorts and it has its own aspect racer requirements optimized for mobile so people are calling this kind of a copycat of tiktok um, focusing on vertical video for mobile users and um it's six to sorry it is 9 to 16 or 1 to 1 and it's under 60 seconds of runtime. So your video can't be longer than that. If it's any longer than 60 seconds, it's not going to be allowed to be a YouTube short and shown in the short reel that comes up now quite prominently when you're searching for YouTube videos. Facebook um, has actually not a bad, most people don't think about Facebook when it comes to video publishing, but it's actually not a bad option, especially for distribution and syndication. That's what I talked about before, that if you have something like a one hour video podcast and you want to kind of, you know, there's a few great sound bites and there's a lot of kind of talking and you want to say, you know what, these two minutes are going to be of interest. Here's another two minutes. Here's another, here's another two minutes. Let's publish our main video on YouTube and let's push this out on Facebook. So that's a very valid strategy. The max video length is 240 minutes, which we're going to see soon is actually on the longer range. And in terms of the off-network off visibility, which I touched on before, very important, very, very much a thing no one thinks about for reasons that continue to evade me. And it has not a bad video management functionality that allows you to add subtitles and custom thumbnails as well. So uh, Facebook, as they come, is actually really, really not bad. I'm not sure I'd recommend that most people use it for publishing in the first place, unless you're really doing Facebook marketing. Um, I feel like Facebook at this point in time is kind of a lost network in a sense, in the sense that the younger generations are on Instagram and TikTok and the older folks like me are, I probably spend more time on YouTube and LinkedIn these days than Facebook. But, you know, some people still use Facebook a lot. Here's Now, LinkedIn um, has got a video native video publishing platform like all these other networks. Um, and something I believe, and this is only just through my own work with clients, what I've observed, is I think LinkedIn strongly favors native video than sharing YouTube videos. In other words, I've done kind of primitive A-B testing where I share a video on LinkedIn natively. 
and then share a YouTube video and the native one has far outperformed it for reasons that don't make any sense. So my guess would be LinkedIn's algorithm is trying to get you to stay on platform. The max video, so that's just if you are looking to distribute video on LinkedIn, it's a reason why rather than being kind of a bit lazy and just copying and pasting a YouTube link, it might be worth going to the extra few minutes effort of uh, cropping out and then publishing. The max video duration on, on LinkedIn, and this is all by the way just at the time of writing, that's why I put the date at the start of this video, this may change. The max video duration is currently 15 minutes and this does actually change quite frequently. So they have an unusual one, It's at, you, you get another five minutes if you upload via the desktop versus the mobile, so there's a little hack. 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Now Twitter is and also has native video support, but it has a max video duration of 140 seconds and a minimum of 30 seconds. So really this is for kind of very short videos, but again, I've seen evidence in my own uh, experimentation that native video outperforms video shared from other platforms, commonly YouTube, but you do have a pretty small 110 second window there for your length. I would say most people are accessing Twitter on their phone, although that shouldn't be hard to look up that particular data point that I didn't add in here. So I would probably go for a mobile friendly aspect ratio for distribution over Twitter. Reddit, the kind of weird network that I recommend people don't forget because of the fact that it does have super engaged um, communities in subreddits basically. Now you can post video natively to your Reddit profile or to subreddits which allow the posting of videos. When you administer a subreddit, you can turn off the capability for video. And it's actually fairly surprisingly generous. It's uh, one gigabyte, the max size or the max duration, 15 minutes. And I had to, I couldn't find any great support resources here. So I did have to just go uh, search for this on Reddit and I actually found a Reddit thread where one of the admins mentioned. And uh, this is from eight months ago. So I don't know if it's still the case but that is what I found. Finally, Instagram and TikTok uh, will take these separately. Instagram is very mobile centric, great for younger demographics. The aspect ratio is one to nine, one to one or nine to 16, which is of course 16 to nine flipped on its flip to vertical. The max file, max file size videos for up to 10 minutes is 650 megabytes and the max size, size file size videos up to 60 minutes at 3.5. Reels of course are a big part of the network as they are increasingly on Facebook. TikTok, from an SEO visibility, visibility standpoint, it is quite a closed platform, but very popular among younger generations. I have heard of people having great success marketing on TikTok, uh, but it's not. I've worked mostly in B2B marketing for quite sort of, you know, mature corporate cybersecurity products. And TikTok has just never kind of come up as a relevant channel for us. And I don't use it myself. So therefore, this presentation is biased away from the network. So... If you want to learn about how to do video marketing on TikTok, speak, hire a millennial uh, or younger and they'll probably know a ton more than someone of my relatively old vintage. I feel I feel strange calling myself old at 33. TikTok videos can be up to 287.6 megs and they do allow um, vertical video even though they say you should probably do... Sorry, they allow horizontal video even though they say you should probably do vertical. Some top line recommendations to finish off this uh, presentation. At least consider the option of hosting video on your own site. Don't just assume it's not an option before you actually, you know, check how much space do you have in your hosting, how much have you used, how many videos do you plan on putting up there. If you're only looking to put up a few videos, it might actually be more, more feasible and just less hassle and more future-proof, most importantly, to just publish and host videos on your website. For most video-centric marketers, YouTube remains the most versatile platform because it's one platform that allows you to publish short videos for people who like that format and very long form videos like corporate webinars, whereas TikTok, you're not able to post a 60 minute video, but you can do short. So that's why I continue to like YouTube. A lot of people are very against YouTube for adding shorts. They're thinking, oh, they're kind of copy canning TikTok. I don't see it that way. I see it as they're making YouTube more useful for marketers who want to use one platform to reach these different demographics. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebooks, I think they're decent for distribution, as I mentioned, especially for shorts and re-edits. That's a big trend I'm seeing. And in general, video content's hard to produce. So you want to get kind of bang for your buck, or that's another big marketing trend I'm seeing at the moment is, uh, you know, you don't really want to be producing a hundred videos in a year. If, ideally, if you can 
script and make one great video and then use it intelligently across different networks, that's less work. The right mix is massively project and demographic specific. Choose the best platform for your audience. And that's kind of where I'm going to wrap up this thing just before the 20 minute mark or a little bit after is there's no one size fits all answer, but I hope that's given you the sort of ground grounding or basis to know which might be best for a specific client or whether you're just watching this for your own marketing needs. If you do want to get in touch with me um, with questions or thoughts, here's here's an email that will reach me or someone working with me, public at Daniel Rosell, R-O-S-E-H-I-L-L dot com, C-O-M, of course. And thank you guys for your attention. It's been a pleasure to talk about this and uh, hope it was interesting and informative for those who watched.